as of today, 9-29-17, I am 68 years old. Today's my birthday. I've been incarcerated. Um, as I said earlier, I'm 68 years old, and I basically can say I've been incarcerated maybe 20 of those years. You know, not 20 straight, but throughout my adult life, uh, about 20 years. Hi, my name is Louis. I'm a peer specialist outreach mentor, and currently I'm going to school to be a certified recovery specialist. My personal story was I was involved with drugs out here. It was my mainstay selling and using, and eventually, like all hustlers, you will get caught, and I finally got caught. I was clean and sober for over a year, and um, that was my last time in, in, in prison. Uh, Andre Sanders, uh, I'm currently uh, two and a half years clean. Um, I went to college, and from college, um, I went to jail because of my addiction. Um, life is good right now. I'm working, uh, you know, living life again, starting over fresh. Uh, being in recovery is it's like um, you see people, and you can tell that they use them and just remind you of, you know, the pain and the the denial that you went through and, and you think you're hurting certain people because you keep using and all reality you just have to yourself. Yeah, I, um, I'm here, I was um, using drugs like for 35 years. So out of them 35 years, like three or four years, I was in the tracks, you know what I mean? Using, so living, you know, the homeless, you know, the process. Um, I'm, I started a group called Angels in Motion because my son was out on the streets, um, homeless and addicted. And going out to find him, I found a lot of lost, hopeless souls and I just felt like I had to do something to help them. And then as it progressed and the more I learned about addiction, the more I could see if I ignored him and his existence like he wanted me to do, I could see him spiral deeper and deeper. The more I engaged with him and told him I loved him and started talking to him about harm reduction and, you know, don't use other people's needles, you could get hep C, get HIV, like these are important things. Please. My, my substance use started around the age of 11 uh, with my father and ended at the age of 27 when um, I found myself uh, incarcerated. I've been in the field for over 20 years. Um, I've worked not only in drug and alcohol, but HIV related services. And currently um, I do a lot of the overdose reversal trainings in the city and surrounding counties. Um, I am a person in recovery. I've been, uh, as of February the 1st of this year, 2017, I had uh, 25 years drug free. And it's a huge passion of mine to be able to uh, um, give back to the community as much as I can. So, Hi, my name is Silvana. I have been at Prevention Point for 10 years and over the last 10 years I have um, helped or saved uh, somewhere between 30 and 40 people with three different types of naloxone. In the sense of, of overdosing and the risk factors, anybody who whether they're coming out of prison, whether they're coming out of treatment, detox, or anybody whose drug use has been interrupted for 24, 48 hours or more, is a high risk candidate for overdose. Everybody and anybody who is coming out of, the, out of the, any type of penal system should come out prepared with the knowledge on how to administer Narcan, how to reverse somebody who has overdosed, and also, um, and also know how to get it. Because if they happen to use that dose, what do I do after that? Right. In the beginning, you know, I had my little ups and downs, you know, my little falls and everything. But gradually, everything uh, fell into place, you know, or is falling into place. I been with my brother on a daily basis. Uh, he OD numerous times, so I had to I had to learn, you know, how to bring him back. I wish. We had Narcan back then, 
because a lot, of, a lot of people will still be alive. But I've learned what to do now. And I say, thank God we have Narcan, you know. And when I, was, uh, I walked in uh, a few months ago, so somebody was screaming, uh, somebody OD. So I think I once in a while carry Narcan, you know, because I got that Narcan train. And I see, I went to the procession, you know, a simple one. Look at the guy, he's breathing, all that. So, of course, a lot of people say, you hold this. So I had the knock and I just spread them, you know, turn around, make sure, you know, sharp objects around, make sure nothing is mild. You know, that little procedure. And that took, you know, a couple minutes, he came back up, you know what I mean? Thank God for that. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it felt great, but that was like my first time. I said, wow, you know, I did it, okay. You know, I feel good, you know what I mean? To somebody, you know, can come out of the OD, you know what I mean? From dying. Yeah. Now it's like almost everybody should have it, you know what I mean? Like it's more easy for people to get it, you know what I mean? Uh, especially, you know, I would say family member, you know, they already know your cousin, even your mom, your grandpa. Hey, I know my grandkids use it, so let me get training for this and have this now again. One thing for a parent I think is really scary is when you admit that your child is in active addiction and they're doing heroin and hard drugs, you have to admit that any day your child could die. It takes a lot out of you because you just know that they they have a chance at life. If you have Norcan, you can give it to them. But what if you don't? What if we didn't have it there? By the time the ambulance came, I don't, it, it would have been too late. Mm, unfortunately, I overdosed three times in that time I was out there. And the actual overdose, I don't remember, but it had to be bad. They worked on me for 45 minutes, gave me six shots of Norcan. I've actually saved seven people's lives. It's it's a funny experience seeing somebody just collapse and like your um, your adrenaline goes up. You're nervous because this person might die, and you know you're like the person there that's trying to save their life. Um, I was scared when it happened, and um, thank God it did work, and they got through to it. To be honest with you, I'll give you the best suggestion. Do not pick up. You got clean time under your belt. It might be a cliche, go to a meeting, you know, but it's it's the honest God's truth. The only way you'll truly be safe getting out of jail and trying to go back to using drugs is not to use drugs. Because if you get out and you pick up where you left off, you're playing Russian roulette with your life. And, um, it was a little bit different from the last time, from, from the other times, um, in that I just did did some different things that time like instead of um getting involved in um like the negativity and the things that i had pr previously gotten involved in like how to get drugs how to get um other people's medication and things like that i tried to get in involved with all the positive things like i did bible studies i went to church um i got into options i got into all the things that i could do um I got a job, I went, I got into the jail laundry and stuff like that. I just did anything that I could do that was positive. Um, I tried to focus myself for, towards, and I just made up my mind that when I got out, I was gonna do something different. So I made sure that I had a home plan. And I found that that was like the key to it, like to not just get out and like hit the streets and be like, I not have any place to go. So I set it up so that I had a recovery house to go to when I got out. And through the grace of God, I got 12 years clean and sober. One of the things that people need to be mindful of is uh, another, you know, cautionary, cautionary measure is not using alone. Um, if somebody comes out and happens to relapse or get surges, it's important that if you're trying to really succeed, that you reach out to somebody. But, and even if you do relapse, that you tell somebody or, um, do not use alone. Make sure you stay around people. Um, one of the other reasons that people die, unfortunately, is that they overdose and no one is there to help them. If you are carrying um, naloxone or Narcan and there happens to be an overdose, then you have to um, make sure you let people know that you have it on you. So if, if anything, forbid, you know, God forbid something were to happen, at least people will be there to, to, to revive you. 
But again, your best bet is get your tools in order, make sure you get a strong foundation, know your weaknesses, have a, a, um, a team, a group of people, a plan of people that you know you can reach out to when you get out. And, and always carry Narcan. Hi, this is Elvis Rosado, and I'm gonna show you what to do in the event that you come across somebody who may be overdosing. But first, what may cause overdoses? One of the major issues is anyone whose drug use has been interrupted by 24 hours or more is high risk for overdose. If you happen to come across someone who is blue, purplish, extremely pale with a gurgling noise, the darker the skin of the individual, they may present as gray or ashy, those individuals are in respiratory distress. You need to call 911 immediately. So now that you've called 911, it's time to administer the Narcan. This is the name brand. In the event that you have been given the generic, it looks like this. Make sure that your pharmacist shows you how to use this and how to put it together upon getting it. The name brand, Narcan, is an antagonist. It, it gently blocks the receptors and pushes the opiate out and gently brings the person out of their overdose. In order to administer this, you're gonna peel the back, it's a foil. You're gonna pull the product out. It looks like this. You don't have to do anything to it. Thumb in the bottom, fingers in the top, like bunny ears or quote unquote symbol. You put the thumb there, fingers here. You're gonna put it into the nostril, you're gonna press. The minute you press, it discharges the dose. You don't have to do anything else. It's a one-time use, one-time dose. It's gonna take roughly five to eight minutes to have its full effect on the person. In the event that you give it to somebody, don't be afraid of hurting them. The only thing that's happening is you're blocking their receptors. It's not gonna hurt them in any other way, shape or form. So now that you've administered the Narcan, it's time to get this person breathing. You need to start to do rescue breaths. You get a shield, face shield that looks like this. You open the package, you pull it out. You're gonna put it over top of the person's face. The nose over top of the nose. You're gonna pinch. You're gonna take your hand on the chin and forehead. You're gonna tilt the head back. You're gonna blow through that white circle or through the white felt. Two strong breaths every five seconds. One Mississippi through five Mississippi. You're going to continue to do this until the person starts breathing, they wake up, or medical assistance arrives. Once a person wakes up, you need to inform them that Narcan was administered. They are not to use for the next two hours. Let them know that the Narcan is in their system for 30 to 90 minutes. They are temporarily blocked. The drug is still in their system. Once the paramedics get there, that person should go to the emergency room or go with the paramedics. If they choose not to go, inform that person that they should stay around a populated area. So if they happen to re-overdose, there will be somebody there to call out for assistance or call 911. Keep in mind, one of the reasons that people die is because they were alone when they overdosed. And in some cases, there were people present but didn't know what to do and they didn't have Narcan. Thank you so much for making the decision not only to learn how to use Narcan, but to carry Narcan. You now have the power to save a life. Thank you. So as a review, always call 911, then give naloxone and then do rescue breathing. Two rescue breaths every five seconds for five minutes. It's important to tell the person afterwards to not use again. Naloxone only blocks an overdose for a few minutes so that person could overdose again so they can't use drugs again. If you need naloxone, you can get it at a pharmacy. You can also come to Prevention Point. We're located at 2913 Kensington Avenue off of Monmouth near the Somerset Stop and we give out kits Monday through Friday.